Hi. The wheels came off in several ways, one after the other. Movies need their fair share of luck or they die long before they meet their audience. My first unfortunate was losing half the money. There was a rough scramble to try and fill that hole, which I never really managed. So then it became a lesson in fortitude, in stickability, long after the shoot had finished, having been surrounded by my mates, having a great time of it. That was all a now a dim and distant memory in the twilight world of post, where so much of it was just me trying to work out how to get something expensive done for not very much. Every time you turn around in the film world, it costs money. People expect you to have money, be made of money because you're making a movie. Things have changed a little now, but everyone still needs to get paid. But there are ways. If you're patient and aren't in a hurry, if your deadlines can be that little more relaxed, then you can get things done for a different price. Most players are needing stuff done yesterday. All of Post is in a mad flurry and a rush as, as jobs come in and there's mad industry and excitement occupying every atom of your being and then it's done and gone. If you can sidestep that, there'll be downtime. I think I said I got a complete colour grade done at the mill for a bottle of wine. It also helps a great deal if the guys you are hoping to pull into your project like the film in the first place. It helps immeasurably. It makes the negotiation so much easier. So make a good film. After all the travails of having no money in post and not having planned for that being the case, I took the film to the Cannes market. Now, this is not a cheap undertaking. You have to purchase a spot well in advance. Screenings cost prime dollar. And you're also paying to be there as a production company. Then there's travel and accommodation. And I was in a caravan site miles from the Cannes Centre and there was a bus strike on. But also the cost of transporting five film cans out there safely. I'll always be indebted to the British Council for their help with these costs and taking my film out with their crates. I screened and landed a sales outfit on International owned by Prince Edward. I called Stan with the good news from Cloud9 and we negotiated a good deal having made the film first complete. But then the sales agent went very silent and then the bad news hit. Arden had gone down. Word was that because Prince Edward had made a TV program about the princes at school when there was an embargo on anyone doing so after the demise of Lady Di, He'd been drummed out of the industry by a press who didn't have such access to the royals being irate at the iniquity. Anyway, the long and the short of it was the film went down with that ship. Films are delicate things. They have a sell-by date. And if something isn't made of them within a certain time frame of them being picked up, it begins to spell off to the rest of the industry and can soon become untouchable. Nothing has changed. The film is still the film. But the feeling about the film has changed. So even though we'd successfully managed to find a new sales outfit in Eagle Rock, it still failed. Several of the key deliverables didn't find their way from Arden to Eagle and too much time had passed. Shortly thereafter, the lady dealing with angels at Eagle Rock died of cancer. The dice was loaded against it. There are actually a great many other things that also conspired to kill my angels, but too long and convoluted to go into here. As I say, if there's interest, I'll deliver on a memoir. The bottom line, though, is, aside from a short but successful flight at a few festivals, the film, in the end, was prevented from ever really seeing the light of day. A sad and salutary tale. Mm -hmm.